Actually, I just want to mention memcached in a little more detail. Um, memcached is a generic uh, two-level giant hash table that stores um, name value pairs. So you can store objects in memory. It's a database helper router is what it is. And the way it works is a key will select a server, the first part of it, and then the rest of it will be the hash within that server. Um, Flickr, Wikipedia, Twitter, YouTube, Dig, Craigslist, uh, all use memcached. And generally, if your objects are under a megabyte in size, your keys are less than about 256 bytes or so, and you fit some other constraints, it's um, a pretty good database offloader. Um, basically, you'll uh, when you've got to fetch an ID, you'll just go look in the cache to see if it's there, and if it's there, return it. If it's not there, you get it from the real database, and then set it into the memcache and return. And why would you use this instead of just using the database? Um, I'll leave that to you to take a look at uh, memcached memcache.org oh, I forget the name of their site. Search for mem yeah, memcache.org. It's an open source free thing developed for LiveJournal, I think, and um, basically was developed to solve the problem of database bottlenecks that they were having, and it turned out to be applicable in other places. And the other thing I wanted to say is, um, in the slides, on slide 190-ish, somewhere around there, I have a URL, it's too long to write out, but it has a sort of a top 10 list of, you know, the presentation that I showed you from the Rackspace CTO. Um, it has 10, sort of the top 10 list of similar presentations, how we suffered through scaling at, and it's got Flickr on there, Twitter, um, Box, some other popular websites, I can't name off the top of my head. But if you're interested in the topic beyond this, uh, they're a good set of slides to go through. And you'll notice when you go through them, like you read the Twitter one. You know, the Twitter application is really pretty trivial at its heart, right? 140 byte messages. And, but all the scaling issues that they had to face um, were huge. And, but the set of things that they think are important, you'll find, you know, if you're, if you're doing any more than A and B and C, you're doing something wrong. But then you turn around and look at somebody else like, uh, you know, YouTube or somebody else who has a different set of constraints and their A, B and C are not the same. They have A, B and Q and L. And if you're doing anything else, you know, but it's so consuming at such a painful time to try to um, get the enterprise through that scaling period and keep it together before you can relax and sort of enjoy the fruits of the labor, that you have to be pretty myopic about it. So these presentations kind of reflect that. They tend to be their view, and this is the way you do it, and you'd silly to do anything else. But my point is, keep in mind that the caveat here is it depends on what domain that you're in. But they're a very interesting set of presentations um, to see how some of these uh, now very popular websites that dish out a lot of traffic, uh, how they got through the scaling curve. Okay.